Welcome back to The Pulse, live from Bloomberg's London headquarters. Now, the battle for nose space stepped up a gear this week when Google bought a stake in HiMax Display. That's a maker of equipment for Google Glass. But Google is not the only game in town. For more, let's head over to our Middle East editor, Elliot Gotkin. Uh, now, those aren't smart glasses on your nose, Elliot. <laughs> They're not. They are my glasses, though. But it used to be that uh, wearing glasses made you look a little bit smarter. I'm not sure if these have the desired effect. But certainly right now, we do seem to have uh, a little bit of a, of a face race with companies trying to uh, actually make people appear smarter as well with the help of augmented reality. And Google Glass is perhaps just the high profile, most high profile company in this arena. But there are others out there as well. There's US, US listed Vuzix, uh, for example, and Epson as well. Many other companies trying to get into this arena. But there was one company uh, which got there before everyone else. It's a pioneer of smart glass technology, what I like to call iTech, and its name is Loomis. A Loomis lens begins life as a plain piece of glass. After coating it with mini mirrors and slotting a micro projector into the frames, it becomes, for the wearer, an 87-inch screen, and the very latest in iTech. Loomis's technology in the form of this eyeglass has been used by the US military for the last five years, for example by F-16 fighter pilots. Now though, the company's got consumers in its sights. That might mean a face-off with Google Glass. For Loomis's founder, that's fine by him. The major advantage of our technology is that the element which projects the light into the eye of the viewer is a thin transparent glass. Our technology is as simple as a simple eyeglasses. It's also a lucrative business, or at least it will be. 10 million pairs of smart specs could be sold by 2016. Throw in all wearable tech and the figure rises to 170 million units and a $10 billion industry. In reality, augmented or otherwise, much may depend on how rapidly software developers embrace Google Glass type technology. Well, it's all about the ecosystems of the apps and the services and the smartness, the intelligence built into these apps and services. For Loomis, this means partnering with the world's biggest technology companies, setting its sights on becoming as crucial to the development of smart glasses as Intel was for the PC. Elliot Gotkin, Bloomberg, Rehovot, Israel. And uh, so although Loomis uh, says that its technology is much better than the likes of Google Glass, ultimately what it wants to do here is to be the enabler for other companies to get into this area. So I'd be delighted to be, for example, a partner with Samsung, with Apple, with anyone else that wants to get into smart glasses. Uh, but uh, so that's something that it's, that it's working on. But it already has, as, uh, as I just showed there, a very um, uh, decent business already uh, supplying the military, where it seems to have cleaned up when it comes to eye displays for fighter pilots and uh, Raytheon of course recently announced as well uh, that it was using uh, Loomis technology as well Francine. Yeah Elliot as this technology though catches on the privacy concerns must be bound mounting what are the companies actually doing about it? Well, it's probably a little bit too early to, uh, to to say what the company is going to do about it because we haven't quite seen exactly in practice how people are going to use and potentially abuse these technologies. But uh, the, the Gartner analyst that you uh, saw on there has already said that there are there are people out there being uh, described as glass holes, which uh, I won't. Uh, I'll leave to your imagination to, uh, to 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 understand what that's related to. But certainly there is a concern that people can be wearing these glasses and can be looking up statistics or looking up other information about people or, or using them in ways that perhaps uh, they weren't uh, necessarily intended. But I suppose with any new technology, there always is the uh, potential for abuse, whether we're talking about the internet or whether we're talking about smartphones or, or anything else, Francine. Yeah, there certainly is. Thank you so much. Our Middle East editor, Elliot Gotkin there in Tel Aviv.